Hi guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, and today we're going on a little trip. Um, this is something a few people have requested, is just a tutorial on getting to other planets and other celestial bodies, moons and so on, and in this particular uh, tutorial we're going to go to Duna. Um, it's probably the best planet to head for, and we're going to be using this ship that you're seeing now. So without further ado, let's take off, and uh, as usual with this kind of, uh, this kind of thing, you're going to just want to take off and immediately start heading to the east. It's the most efficient way to take off and start getting into an orbit with Kerbin. And for this tutorial, what we're going to do first is just get into a nice stable orbit. That's how you want to start off um, with any mission, really. But in this case, we're just going to ascend up to a stable orbit, set ourselves up um, in, a, in a kind of relatively low orbit for now, just to, to illustrate. Um, but crucially, the other step I'm going to be doing, which you don't have to do, um, apart from obviously losing this fairing because we're now out of the atmosphere so we can lose some weight, there we go. Um, the other thing we're going to be doing is visiting uh, a refueling station. I have a couple of these around uh, Kerbin and in this case I want to stop here and get some fuel. Now this isn't absolutely critical, you can uh, go through this, this mission without, and in fact I did when I first went to uh, Duna and Eve, certainly you, you don't necessarily need to refuel, uh, but it gives you that little extra wiggle room when you 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 know when you're on this mission, uh, and certainly when you get to the other side, when you're when you're at the uh, planet or moon you're heading for, you will probably thank yourself for having stopped. So all I'm doing here is just going to stop for a, a you know to pick up a bit of fuel. We'll skip past that, uh, and as you can see, there we are. My fuel tank is now full, and I'll head away from uh, from the station. Um, at this point, all I'm going to do, uh, just for clarity's sake, is put myself into a slightly higher orbit. The only reason I'm doing this um, is because I want to show off, uh, effectively, the uh, the next part a bit more clearly. Uh, the problem here is that I'm kind of in line with a load of other um, stations and stuff in LEO, uh, low Earth orbit, low, low Kerbin orbit, I suppose. So I'm just going to boost up uh, quite a way, uh, just to show you. Um, the lines a little bit more clearly, make things a little bit more obvious in terms of what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to circularise this orbit, get myself into a, a high orbit, and uh, then we'll be able to see what we're doing a little bit more clearly. So here we are, just circularising that orbit off. And again, this I make it very clear, this part isn't absolutely necessary. Um, you don't have to uh, go into a high Earth orbit. In fact, the best thing you can do is, is just go from that low. But here we are, so you can see more easily that line. And if we zoom right the way out, you can see the sun there and uh, various planets, and that red one at the top there, that's Duna. That's where we're headed. So what we want to do, ideally, is head the way that I've just turned the camera. We want to head away from uh, Kerbin, uh, precisely the way you can see there as I'm adjusting the um, trajectory. There we are. Uh, and all we're doing, exactly the same as we would with the Mun or the Linus or any other orbit where we want to, you know, extend out, uh, we're going to go prograde and we're going to fire um, in that direction. Now, it's important that we do go this direction um, purely because of the fact that we want to go outside of Kerbin. Duna is an outer planet, uh, whereas Eve and Moho are inner planets. So if you're going to Moho or Eve, uh, you would go inward, so you go the opposite way to the way that we're boosting now. Uh, it's just for efficiency, um, you, you're still going to be able to get to wherever you need to go, but it just adds a, a, it's a bit more efficient. In other words, this way we're going to be outside of Kerbin's orbit, uh, which means that it's yeah, making it more efficient for us to then go on to the other planets. So here we are, just making a big old burn to push ourselves outside of Kerbin's influence to basically escape, um, create, yeah, reach escape velocity, and escape from Kerbin's influence, there's Kerbin behind us there. Uh, and you can see now, here we are, we will basically arc right the way around and fly out of the uh, the system, uh, and we'll be in uh, the orbit of the sun alone. Um, caution needed here a little bit um, in avoiding the moons, uh, Mun and the Minmus, they could throw you off and you could end up getting all sorts of trouble if, they, uh, if, if you get into their sphere of influence and you're sort of flung out the other side of them. So be very careful, I only just missed the Mun there myself, so it does happen. Um, here we are then, escaping from Kerbin, and now we are literally in our own orbit around the Sun. So we've transferred, we've done a transfer from Kerbin to uh, the Sun itself. At this point, all we really have to worry about um, is effectively getting to Duna. We're now outside the sphere of influence of Kerbin. We don't have to worry about any other moons or anything else. We now just have to worry about getting to that little red planet there um, of Duna. And it's exactly the same as what you'll have done to get to the uh, to the to the Mun or the Minmus. Um, all we need to do is make a transfer. We need to set up our 
um, manoeuvre here as I'm doing and watching for when we get nice and close to it here. Exactly the same as you did with the model of the Mimus. We want to make sure that we get nice and close to it when we make the transfer. So all I'm doing is just tweaking uh, my uh, prograde, retrograde burn, you know, times and so on, just to make sure that I'm, you know, getting as close as I possibly can to the planet. The closer you get to it when you make this transfer, the less fuel you use. It's as simple as that. The closer you are, the, the easier it is to circularize off your orbit. A high orbit means you'll only just get into its sphere of influence. In other words, it's, it's, it's gravity. If you are too high on that, you may end up overshooting the planet before you've had a chance to slow down. Because we will need to slow down here, much like with the Mun. If you don't stop yourself, in other words, if you, if you encounter it but don't actually slow down, you'll just escape again and fly off back into space, which would be a waste of time and, and fuel, obviously. So here I am, I'm just basically trying to get myself as close as I re realistically can to this, uh, to this planet. Um, worth noting as well that I'm actually going to go around the sun twice. Um, because of the fact that I'm in a bit of an unusual position. You can really see that there, and you are reading that correctly. It's a year and 200 uh, odd days. Um, so it's, it's over uh, a year. So I'm going to go around the sun once, and then just about a half. So I'm going to skip forward to that, because you don't want to sit and watch that. Um, here we are. We've gone around the sun, uh, as I say, once, and one and a half times, roughly. Uh, and that was purely because we were in a bit of an unusual position with, with Duna when I took off. It's no big deal because, of course, you're not really using fuel. One thing to note, though, is those solar panels and other things, you need to make sure that they are pointing towards the sun uh, at all times when you're uh, when you're uh, making those um, uh, warps, those, those time warps, because if you don't, you could get into trouble, and if your ship's facing the wrong way when you come to your manoeuvre node, you're going to be pretty annoyed if you can't turn the ship around because you've got no power to do so. In this case, I have power and everything's fine, so I'm going to just wait until that manoeuvre node uh, time comes up, and there we go. Now let's burn... A big old burn, because we are uh, basically pushing ourselves out. We're making a, a if you like, a, a prograde burn from the sun. Obviously, if you're going to an inner planet, you make a retrograde to pull yourself in towards the sun. But in this case, we're going out towards Duna. We're going to make this sizable burn. And you can see at this point, if you look at the fuel down there on the bottom left, yeah, that's the reason why I decided to refuel uh, at Kirby. As I say, you can do this without refueling, but uh, for your own peace of mind, it's, it's often better just to, to get yourself uh, as much fuel on board as you can, really. Um, so here we are, we've, we've now managed to get uh, to the manoeuvre node and we've now, as you can see, uh, ended up in a situation where we are heading, splitting away from Kerbin. Kerbin is there above us, if you like, that, that little green blob moving away. And we're moving away from Kerbin towards this red dot on the right, which is Duna. And we are very slowly uh, approaching it. It does take a while, again it's taking many, many, many days to get uh, out there, obviously weeks, and probably months I imagine. Um, but we're heading there, and you can see that Duna and, and uh, the probe are slowly coming together. Um, it's at this point, again, you should always remember to make sure that your solar panels are pointing towards that sun. Um, if they're not, you could end up in a situation where you reach Duna without any power. And again, you won't be able to manoeuvre, you won't be able to do a lot, which would be obviously a bit of a disaster. So, again, just time warping forward, I'm just lapsing forward just to show you how roughly how this part of the trip works. It's fairly self-explanatory, fairly simple. Um, again, exactly with the Min, uh, the, sorry, the Mun or the Minmus, you're just really waiting until you get to the point where you're captured. That's just ahead there, those little icons ahead of us. So I'll slow the right the way down, um, and you can see how close we are now. Um, the 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 uh, planet Duna is just behind us, really, um, and we're essentially just waiting now to to reach it. Now, the other thing is I forgot to open my antenna, and that could have been quite nasty with the uh, comnet um, enabled, which would have uh, potentially meant that our probe was lost. Uh, I did a, a video on the comnet a little while ago. Worth keeping that in mind, because again, like the power situation, if you have no contact with your probe when it gets there, you aren't going to be able to control it or do anything. So always make sure you've got enough... Uh, you know, you've got your antennas set up and so on. And here we are, we have arrived at Duna. We are now captured, if you like, by the influence, gravitational influence of Duna. And again, with uh, as, as with the moon, uh, the mun or the minmus, exactly the same situation. We just want to basically get to that periapsis and then retro burn uh, to get ourselves into a nice orbit. Um, simple as that. We've already You've already done it probably with the, the, the Mun or the Minmus. Uh, if not, just you know, have a practice doing that. It's, it's not, not, you know, not a particularly difficult concept, this. All you're doing really is, now that you've been captured, is just drawing in um, the, uh, the, the periapsis, if you like. You're, you're drawing in your orbit. You're slowing down so that, in effect, you're captured by that influence of gravity that you have with the planet. 
Uh, so that's all we're doing, really. We're now going to skip uh, forward shortly. Um, I'm just making sure I've got a nice orbit, really, with the planet at this point. And we're just going to burn and put ourselves into uh, into an orbit. Once you're in orbit, you you know, Bob's your uncle. Job done, really. But what you will want to do, obviously, if you're going to land on this planet, is the next step. So this at this point, um, provided this burn, you've got enough fuel to do this next burn, which I have just about. You can see my fuel is quite low, but I have got enough. At this point, you have arrived. You've done it. You've arrived at the planet, um, and you know you could you, you can go from there. You could transfer to uh, another moon, uh, or you could obviously just leave a probe. Um, or station around this planet, but you've done it ultimately. Once this burn is complete, um, you're in orbit, and that's that. However, we'll just do a little bit on um, landing on this anyway. We've come all this way, we may as well. Um, so, again, you can see here the orbit is just being dropped, and boom, there we go. We're now in orbit, we're in a nice, safe orbit of the planet Duna. Uh, again, worth doing your research uh, on just how high the atmosphere is. Duna has a uh, relatively light uh, thin atmosphere which is quite low um, it's, 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 I, think, I think lower than uh, Kerbin's and we'll come back to its, uh, its atmosphere shortly but again you don't want to uh, drop your uh, you know your orbit so low that you end up in its atmosphere if you do that you could be in quite a bit of trouble and again also worth being uh, cautious when you're coming in because this uh, planet does have a moon and you don't want to uh, intersect with that or crash into it god forbid very unlikely you'd do that but it's still worth uh, worth being cautious. So what we're going to do here is, uh, once again, um, just skip forward. I'm keeping this in the video purely because it's quite a nice spectacle. Um, it's the first time we've really seen uh, Duna up close in this, uh, this entire video, and there it is in the background. Um, when we skip forward, uh, which we're about to do, um, you really, you know, you kind of really get an idea of the, the sort of the sort of scale of this game. It is quite impressive. So here we go, we're going to zoom in. You can see its moon there swinging around and around the planet. It's quite imposing because it kind of looks like we're getting close to it. We don't in the end, but it does look, uh, you know, quite imposing. It's swinging around at us. Um, it looks looks potentially quite threatening. But here we are. We've arrived um, on the other side, and we're just going to do a nice little um, burn to make sure that our, uh, you know, our orbit is low and relatively circularized. It doesn't matter too much. You can see there that Duna is framed in the background. Unfortunately, we're on the dark side of it, but it's quite pretty. And in fact, the sun has just popped around the other side of it. Um, and you can see as well, if you look at the bottom of the planet there, it does have poles. It does actually have uh, icy poles, uh, not, not dissimilar to, to Mars. And just skipping forward a little bit, you can see its moon again in the, in the background there next to the sun. We're just uh, circularizing our orbit once again, just to make sure we're nice and circular and low. The other thing you probably want to do, which I'm about to do here, or show off here, is uh, just uh, effectively make your orbit nice and normalized. In other words, flat, effectively. At the moment, we have a very eccentric orbit, and that's all I'm doing here is using the normal anti normal to, uh, to do that. And there we are, we'll skip ahead a little bit, and uh, I've made that burn, and we're now on a, effectively an equatorial orbit. At this stage, uh, all that's left to do really is to land, and I talked again, I did a little video on Kerbnet as well uh, a while ago, but Kerbnet is incredibly useful at this stage in, 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 in proceedings. Um, in and of itself, Kerbnet is, is not too impressive to look at. Um, in, in, in some respects, I think it's actually a very nice little uh, GUI. But ultimately, what it gives us is the ability to look up uh, biomes, and crucially, more useful in many ways, is to spot landing points. You can see if you look at the uh, planet itself, it, it's quite difficult to sort of spot exactly where you're going to land. It's difficult to spot precisely where it'd be best. But Kerbnet kind of gives you not only the ability to spot particular biomes, which is useful if you want to do scientific work on a particular biome or what have you. It takes all that guesswork out. Um, but in addition, it allows you to really choose a good spot. On the right there, you can see a lot of, um, you know, that kind of like paler, whiter colour. Um, that is the highlands. Uh, those are basically mountains and hills. Obviously not ideal to land on. Um, very dangerous to come down on those. But there's the, uh, the, the Midland Sea, as it's called, the lowlands. Um, areas like that are great. The Midland Sea is very, very flat. Highlands, not so much. They, they would be quite dangerous, potentially, to, to land on. The lowlands are probably pretty good bet as well. But at this point, you just have to choose, and, and Kerbnet lets you do that. So I've separated from my... Uh, into, into my, if you like, my, my almost final stage here. This is my second to last stage. And just carrying out the same burn again you would do on the Mun or the Minmus. All we're going to do is drop our um, orbit down until we effectively come into a landing position with the planet. Um, also, I've actually realised that my uh, speed is going to be sufficiently low that we don't have to worry too much um, about uh, drag or atmospheric pressures. So I've dropped that fairing. 
saving saving as much uh, energy as we can, saving as much uh, weight as we can, rather. And at this point, it's a simple landing maneuver. Uh, we're going to burn uh, to reduce our orbital speed. You can see it was quite high when we first entered, but it doesn't take much to drop it down. Um, and we're landing in a relatively safe spot. Up come the parachutes, and off pops the top section. Uh, of our uh, our probe this is the very final stage and that will just glide gracefully down to the ground coming back to the atmosphere of duna it's very thin so parachutes aren't as effective but they crucially they are effective they will help you um, particularly with this probe which is quite light um, they will help you drop down it means you don't have to use anywhere near as much fuel as you do with the mon or the minmus which obviously simply will not work you can't use parachutes on those um, looking below us, we can see some uh, bits and pieces on the ground. Those are rocks. Caution there, you need to avoid landing on those. Uh, they will flip your ship over potentially, so it's not a good idea to land on them. But here we go, we're just dropping down to the ground. Now, uh, I do actually have the speed up at four times, so it looks like quite a heavy hit on the ground, but actually it was only we're only moving at about uh, five metres a second, so it was a really safe and really nice landing. And uh, yeah, that's it, we've landed. We've landed on uh, Duna itself, and now we can go about all the regular stuff that we would normally go about, again, if you've done the, the, the Man or the Minmus. So here we are, just a little bit of confirmation that we've landed. I don't know, there we are. Perfect. And we can go ahead and obviously make sure we have power. That's the, one of the most crucial aspects. We've got, you know, power there. And we can open up and have a look in our bay. I tend to just set up things like this nowadays. Um, these little containers are really hardy and quite good for landing on planets and, and moons and stuff. So there we are. That is it. We've done. We've landed a probe on Duna. We've come many, many, many thousands of miles uh, across the solar system. If we zoom out, we can see the scale of how far we've come. Um, it's quite impressive, actually, when, when you when you do manage to do this for the first time. Um, you know, you, you you know you do get a sense of achievement from doing this because you know you should you should feel proud because really it's quite quite tough to do. It's uh, it's not not simple. And hopefully this tutorial's given you a bit of a hand there. But there we are. We've come all the way from there over uh, in our home planet of Kerbin, sitting a long way from uh, Duna. And using exactly the same techniques again to go to the inner and outer planets, it won't take you long before you're able to get to uh, all the way out there to Elu or Drez or any of the rest of them. Um, anyway, I hope this tutorial was useful, guys, and uh, see you next time.